This is the start of Revelation chapter 3, and we're going to look at the church in Sardis. Keeping in mind that the seven churches have more than one application, we will study chapter 3. Remember these churches were literal churches in John's time. They will be literal churches in the time of Jacob's trouble, and they each represent a certain time in church history. While we as born-again believers can also get practical application for us today in these verses. So Revelation 3, 1 says, And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest, and art dead. So the church is Sardis. The name of this church is is Sardis, or it's the church in Sardis. And the word Sardis means red ones. And the one talking is obviously Jesus Christ because he has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. Revelation one sixteen says, He holds the seven stars in his right hand. But what are the seven spirits of God as it talks about in verse 1? And I believe that can be found in Isaiah 11.2. It says, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom, understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge, and of the fear of the Lord. So you have the seven spirits there. The Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. But this church has a name that they live while they are actually dead. You can see this with people today. Many people go to church in a suit and tie. They sing the songs, they say amen, they shout. But after the church, there is no desire for God or for the words of God. Sometimes it seems that people look at you and base your righteousness on whether or not you attend a church building. But the Christian life is so much more than this. This isn't the only it isn't the only place you should worship. It isn't the only place you should read the Bible. It isn't the only place you should think about God. There are people who look like they love God and that they love His words, but they really don't. And there are people who look like Christians, but they aren't really Christians. And since we have such a zombie obsession and people love death more than life, they love shows like Walking Dead and movies like Zombieland, and Dawn of the Dead. So a good title for this church could be the First Church of Zombieland. They have a name that they live, but they're dead. They are walking and talking, but they are actually dead. And many times a person's spiritual condition is determined by do they shout and run the bases in church. But if this is really the case, then the Pentecostals have us all beat. And most people are out for the pleasures of, th of this world over the things that will actually last. They live for pleasure, but they are also dead at the same time. 1 Timothy 5, 6 says, But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. But since this is the first church of zombies, the first Baptist church of the zombies, and we need to learn from their mistakes and the instructions given to them, Let's title this study, Becoming Alive for God and Dead to the Devil. Alive for God and Dead to the Devil. If you're not saved, then the only way for you to be made alive is to believe the gospel. Jesus Christ died. He died for you. He was buried and He rose again the third day according to the scriptures. If you want to be made alive, then you will have to put your trust in that gospel. If you have read the Bible, then you notice the word quickened. And this word means to make alive. When you get saved, you are quickened by the Spirit of God. He comes in you and you become alive. Ephesians 2.1 says, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Ephesians 2.5 says, Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. Colossians 2.13 And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, 
having forgiven you all trespasses. 1 Peter 3.18 For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Now, after you have been saved, made alive, quickened, you now have a dead corpse that you are walking around in. This is your flesh. And while you were saved and born again, your flesh didn't get born again. In 1 Corinthians 15.31, the Apostle Paul says, I die daily. And he is talking about being dead to sin. You need to reckon yourself dead to sin. Don't give in to your flesh, which is dead. And don't give in to the lusts that are in this world. Romans 6.11-13 through 13 says, Likewise reckon ye also your mem yourselves dead. To be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God. So these verses prove that a Christian has the possibility of letting sin reign in his mortal body. And that you have to reckon yourselves dead unto sin and alive unto God. And it says, Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. So that shows you have the possibility of doing that even though you're saved. So to say a person isn't saved because they're sinning or because they're doing a certain sin just doesn't line up with what Paul says. A person can be saved and get off into sin. But if we want to be alive for God and dead for the devil, we need to first be watchful. Revelation 3 2 says, Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. The church in Sardis is bad for the most part, but they still have some things that remain that they can strengthen. And if they don't strengthen these things, then they will lose those things. Those things will become weak. Likewise, in our Christian life, if we are being watchful, then strengthening the good things that we have will also come along with it. The saints in the tribulation are waiting for Jesus Christ to come back at the second coming. Uh, we Christians in this time period, we are waiting for Jesus Christ to come back at the rapture that happens before the tribulation. If I'm being watchful, then I'm going to strengthen my Bible knowledge. If you don't have any Bible knowledge of the rapture, then you don't know what you're even supposed to be looking for. But Titus 2.13 says, Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Christians need to watch just like tribulation saints will need to watch. 1 Corinthians 16.13 says, Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, Quit you like men, be strong. Colossians 4.2 says, Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. 1 Thessalonians 5.6 says, Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. So we need to watch and strengthen the things that remain. If your prayer life is good, but you feel it is starting to die off, then do something to revive it. If you sense your Bible reading is dying off, then get some good studies to help your interest spark back up for the words of God. Don't let the few things you still have die off. Revelation 3, 2 says, Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. In verse 3, Jesus gives this church the consequence for not watching. Revelation 3.3 3 says, Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. If they don't watch, then Jesus Christ comes on them as a thief. Matthew 24.42 says, Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. 1 Thessalonians 5.2 says, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. They hung Jesus between two thieves, so therefore he comes back as a thief in the night to those who aren't watching. 
Job chapter 2 also explains how his saints come back with him and enter in the windows like a thief. And then Revelation 3, 3 says, Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. They're going to have to remember what they receive and, and hear and hold fast those things. They're also going to have to repent. They need to repent of their wickedness, continue in the things they are currently doing right, and fix the things they are doing wrong. The next point we see is don't get defiled. If you want to be alive unto God and dead to the devil, then stay away from things that defile. Revelation 3, 4 says, Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. And then if you look at Titus 1, 15 and 16, it says, Unto the pure all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, but even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. So you can be defiled through fornication. Your mind, your conscience can be defiled. You defile yourself when you commit fornication with someone. You defile yourself with mankind when you commit sodomy. The best way to not be defiled is is to not shack up with the world and participate in the things of this world. For the saint in the time of Jacob's trouble, the things that defile are the things of the Antichrist. Matthew fifteen eighteen says, But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. The person who takes the mark will confess allegiance to the Antichrist with his mouth, and he will defile He'll defile himself this way. The saint who turns from God and to the Antichrist will commit spiritual adultery and defile himself this way. By doing this, he will get a mark in his right hand or in his forehead. And Revelation 16 talks about the people who get this mark and they get a noisome and grievous sore on their body. And this is how their garments get defiled, literally, their garments Someone who is a soul winner in the time of Jacob's trouble will have to warn people about this and he can use verses like Jude one twenty three, which says, And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Remember, their garments can get defiled. The garment is spotted by the flesh because of the mark of the beast and the sore that comes from the mark. The sore seems to be like leprosy that can actually get in a man's clothes. Leviticus 13.47 says the garment also that the plague of leprosy is in, whether it be a woolen garment or a linen, linen garment. So leprosy can get in a man's clothes, and most likely the noisome and grievous sore that comes upon the men that have the mark, that sore can get in their clothes. And then their garments are spotted by the flesh, and their garments are defiled. So they are going to have to stay undefiled. They don't want to have to spot their garments. That I mean, they don't want to spot their garments with this sore. And look at what James says that goes along with this really well. He says, uh, "Keep to keep himself unspotted from the world." In James one twenty seven. And how's the tribulation saint going to keep? Himself unspotted from the world, don't go along with the Antichrist. Revelation 3, 5 says, He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Born again Christians in the body of Christ have already overcome, according to 1 John 5, 4, which says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith. And our names are in the book of life, according to Philippians 4.3. Everyone's name starts out in the book of life. If you are saved, then God will keep your name in the book, and it can't be blotted out. Revelation 21.27 lets us know you can't get in New Jerusalem if your name isn't in the book of life. And the consequence of not having your name in this book is written in Revelation 20 and verse 15, and it says, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. 
Revelation 3, 6 says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. One of Jesus Christ's favorite sayings, but yet most people are as the unbelieving Jews in Acts 28, 27. So they're not, they don't have an ear, or they're not letting their ears hear what the Spirit's saying. Because in Acts 28, 27, it says, For the heart of this people is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. And if you're not saved, you may be hearing something. God may be convicting you right now that you need to get saved. And the only way to get saved is to believe the gospel. In 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 3, the Apostle Paul gives you the gospel. He says, Jesus Christ died for your sins according to the scriptures. He was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the gospel. Jesus Christ died. He died for you. He was buried and he rose again the third day. Jesus Christ died for you because you're a sinner. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Colossians 1.14 says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. The only way to get forgiveness for sins is to get under the blood of Jesus. And he shed his blood on the cross to pay for the sins of the whole world. Romans 5, 8 says, But God commendeth His love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So if you want to be saved, realize you're a sinner. Quit relying on your own good deeds that you do to earn heaven. And come to Jesus Christ and rely on what He did on the cross to pay for your sins. Realize that what he did on the cross, dying for you, is the only thing that could ever pay for all the sins that you commit and will commit. And if you'll do that, then you can be saved. Acts 16.31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved.